Good afternoon and welcome to the Exploratorium and to this live presentation, we're bringing you uh, video and uh, we're gonna interview people live from the exploration vessel Nautilus. The Explora exploration ve vessel Nautilus is right now uh, off the coast of the Galapagos Islands, so it's right on the equator and they're gonna be sending down two remotely operated vehicles to the floor of the ocean down there and they're going to be looking at the different, the biodiversity of life down on the ocean floor there. So right now we have uh, Kelly here who's at the Inner Space Center. Hi Kelly. Hello. So uh, tell us where the Nautilus is right now again. You have a better idea. And we are going to be talking to them live. Thank you. Hey, Lindsay and Steve. Great, well, we have a couple of questions. Um, first, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the Nautilus. We had one question earlier about uh, how much does that ship cost? That was one of the things was, uh, is it, is, it looks like a giant ship. Tell us something about the ship. Whoa. All right, so the EV Nautilus is 211 feet long. Uh, we can house 48 different scientists and crew on board. Uh, and as for cost, I don't know the exact cost of the ship, uh, but it's actually a lot cheaper to run than a normal ship. Uh, and that's why we have something called telepresence, what you're experiencing right now. Uh, we only have about first for 31 different science crew, which includes our videographers, our data loggers, our scientists, uh, science communicators, so all these different jobs. Uh, but on land, we also have, what, about 60 different scientists? Yeah, that's right. We have 60 different scientists from various, various institutions across the United States and around the world who are signed up and are going to be watching us live and can communicate with us when in their control room and uh, help direct the science out here. Yeah, so even though we're actually a relatively small vessel for what we do, uh, we can have a whole lot more science being done by the scientists that are on shore. Uh, we're collecting samples from them. We're listening to what they say. Uh, and it's really an awesome collaborative environment. Thanks. What other questions do you have? Uh, we had one question about what kind of animals you're going to be looking for today. Well, one of our collaborators uh, from the uh, from the Galapagos Marine Reserve is very interested in fish, and so that's going to be one of our primary targets. Uh, there's a big conservation effort going on now in the northern part of the Galapagos to come up with uh, new kinds of conservation zones for pelagic fish. So we hope to see a lot of them uh, at various depths. Uh, in particular, one thing we might see are hammerhead sharks. Yeah which uh, are migrating around the different islands here in the northern part of the Galapagos. And so keep our fingers crossed. If you tune in, maybe we'll see some of those. Excellent. Any more questions? Well, I have a question. You said pelagic fish, but I don't think anyone here knows what pelagic means. Maybe you can help us out there. <laughs> sure, pelagic are fish that are swimming in, in the water column. So instead of being more near shore or at the bottom, which would be called a benthic fish, the pelagic are kind of in between the top surface and the bottom. Yep. They're kind of in the middle. In the deep water environment. Yes. Excellent. Any other questions? I'm going to ask our audience if they have any questions here. Well, we're looking, the question is what we're looking at now. The folks on the ship can't see the video, so we're looking at a shark there, I believe. Um, so have you, you just uh, had on board with you the, um, the person who started this whole mission, uh, Bob Ballard. Uh, maybe you can tell us something that you've done this year and what you've explored so far. Yeah, how about you tell where we just were Sure, yeah. One of the exciting things uh, that uh, Dr. Ballard was involved with in some of the first legs here in the Galapagos was a revisit to the site where hydrothermal vents were first discovered in 1977. This was an amazing scientific discovery that found uh, new kinds of 
life on the ocean floor in these very uh, strange volcanic environments. Some of the organisms are these giant tube worms and huge clams and mussels. And these were completely unexpected in the deep sea until Dr. Ballard found them in 1977. So he went back to the same sites that he, that he had visited, and surprisingly, many of those sites were gone. They had been covered over by fresh lava flows. So it's very interesting that some of these new um, extreme environments with all these different organisms are very ephemeral. They really don't last very long, probably on only on the scale, scale of a few decades or so. Excellent. Any other questions? So we saw, uh, previous to joining you, we saw Hercules and Argus put in the water. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about both of those uh, remotely operated vehicles, um, how they're driven, is there anybody on them, um, and, and how they work. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So we have two vehicles. We have Argus and Hercules. Argus is the one that is above, and then we have Hercules below it. Uh, Argus's job is kind of to light up and show Hercules what is going on. So we have lots of lights on it. We also have different probes on it if we're looking for temperature or conductivity or any other things that we want to test in the water. Uh, we also have lots of video cameras on board Argus. And then Hercules is really cool. That's my favorite one if I had to choose. Uh, and so Hercules has a couple of really special things on it that the one are manipulator arms. Uh, and so right now on one of the manipulator arms, it actually has a rock hammer. Yeah. Can you say a little bit about it? Sure. So um, I'm a geologist, so I love to collect rocks from the ocean floor. And the way we usually do it is on the arms of Hercules, we have claws that grab things. But often the rocks on the ocean floor are very, very hard. They're lava flows. So we need some way to break off a piece. And we had some students design a hydraulic rock hammer. It's a hydraulic ram with a very sharp point on the end. And it's mounted on the end of one of Hercules' arms. So we can go up to an outcrop and hammer away at it, break off little pieces, and then pick them up with the other arm. So we're very excited. It's the first time it's going to be tested. And we're really looking forward to seeing what kind of samples we can get with it. Yeah, definitely. We can also, besides collecting rocks and more geologic samples, we can also collect biological samples. Uh, another special thing that we just put on Hercules today are coral cutters. So on the predator arm, which is much more delicate, we added, it's almost like gardening shears onto it. So a piece of coral can go in it, and we can clip it, just like you would clip, like, pruning your roses. Rose bush, yeah. Yep. Uh, and then, so that will help us to be able to collect some corals today. We also have a slurp sampler for sucking up different biological elements. Uh, so hopefully today in our dive, we're going to be able to learn more about the biology and geology through our samples. Yeah, hopefully when the vehicle comes up, it's going to be loaded with samples. <laughs> and we bring them right to that lab over there, you can see behind me, where they'll be processed. Excellent. What other questions do you have? I think we just saw on the video your slurp sampler. Basically, it's a kind of almost like a syringe and you suck in samples. Is that, is that how that works? Uh, yeah, it's actually a glorified Hoover vacuum cleaner is a better way to describe it. It's got a very large plastic uh, tube on the end of it and the manipulator arm picks up the tube and you just go around and you vacuum the ocean floor essentially and suck up anything you can grab. What other questions? Let me ask our audience here. Does anyone have a question here for the ship? There's another question here. Um, um, have they seen any cephalopods? Did you hear that? Have you seen any cephalopods? Oh, cephalopods. It is cephalopod week. Have we seen any yet? Not on my leg, but yeah. you were up earlier. Yeah. So. so I saw in our past uh, one, we definitely saw some octopi. Uh, so we saw some pretty cool ones. One was near a hydrothermal vent, and it was white, which was uh. really cool to see a white octopus. Uh, but we've also seen some squid, um, definitely a lot of other cool organisms down there. Other questions? I have a question here. I was looking at your dive plan, and it says you're looking for something called a pelagic holothurian. I don't know what that is. Can you tell me what that is? 
a pelagic holothurian is sort of the equivalent of a sea cucumber. Sea cucumbers are organisms that basically live on the ocean floor and eat sediment and filter, filter it. It looks very much like a cucumber. The pelagic cucumbers are just another class of beauty. They swim up into the water. They have this beautiful unfolding, um, I don't know how to describe it, like a veil. Yeah. They're usually deep purple in color and they swim very majestically. They're really beautiful animals to watch, and they beat the sea cucumbers hands down in terms of attractiveness. <laughs> They're definitely very beautiful, so we yeah. hope to see them yeah, today. Yeah, we, we, we usually see a lot of them around here. Okay, we'll ask to see if there's any more questions, questions in our audience. We have another question. Are there big creatures? Are there large creatures? That, do you see anything large down there? I know you did see one large creature. One of the largest things that we've seen this season was a sperm whale, uh, which was pretty incredible. Yeah, so definitely we saw them at the surface, and then we're watching them. We're like, oh, wow, whales, that's awesome. And then the whales dove down. We're like, oh, well, that was nice. Uh, but then we saw that sperm whale came down and was checking out Hercules, and it was incredible. And no one had ever had an encounter like that with yeah. a whale before, and especially that, really that deep. Yeah. So it was pretty incredible. But sorry, Exploratorium, it, our time is up, and we need to get back to work. It was great talking to you, and we hope that you'll follow us on NautilusLive.org. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for taking time with us. Thanks, Exploratorium. Again, to follow along for the rest of the season and to send in more questions, just go to NautilusLive.org. And you can also be on the lookout for our next dive alerts on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for watching with us. And again, you can log on live to NautilusLive.org and you can watch them dive at home all day if you want. I have it on my computer running often, so it's really kind of fun to watch. Thank you.